Hi there, my name is Barbara Radecki and this is my book, Messenger 93. Messenger 93 came out in April 2020 in the middle of a pandemic. So instead of doing a real book launch, we did a virtual book launch. And we came together to do some readings and some talks and some Q&As. And what you're about to see is my Q&A session with Diane Tarana. Well, thank you, Barbara, for inviting me. Um, one of my fringe benefits at working at the Wrights Factory is that I get to work with Barbara Radecki. Uh, people often ask me as an editor what I look for in writing and I've been pointing them to the dark house. Now I can point them to Messenger 93. <laughs> so honored. I'm honored to have been a part of this book and I'm honored to be here tonight to ask you some questions about it. Uh, I thought we'd start with M. M is a lonely teen who's called upon by a crow Shouts out to Michelle for that fabulous performance of M and Joe is the crow. Uh, oh, Joe Vanicola. I also have her book here. So, <laughs> my, my wonderful crow. <laughs> M is called upon to find and save her enemy. And I'd like to ask you what prompted you to write a question about someone with a savior complex. Well, the savior complex question actually came up very organically. A lot of times my ideas will just kind of parachute in. And um, I was, this was many years ago, I was still working on the dark house and I was talking to a young teen that I know, and she was dating somebody. And she said to me, she was 16 at the time. And she said to me, you know, he thinks that uh, he's Jesus incarnate, reincarnated, and he really believes it. And it just immediately, I found that fascinating because I think he's not the only one who thinks that he's reincarnated from someone very, very special, right? So this idea that some of us carry within us that um, we're not just ourselves, but we have this higher purpose, we just don't see, don't know what the expression of that is. And that being said, I also wanted to explore what would happen if uh, her journey is not the one that your the average reader might think it is so it was kind of twofold right it was the thing about what happens on that journey of of am i a savior is this what i'm supposed to do i want to save the world i mean right now we must all feel some kind of impulse to save the world uh yet what does that mean and how would we do that so i wanted it to be about that complicated journey um as opposed to you know like a marvel comic where they do actually save the world <laughs> right well, and that brings me to my next question then. One of the, the most important people that she meets on this journey is Greg. He is an indigenous character. And I'd like to ask you how you prepared to write that part. Yeah, so that was very uh, tricky, obviously. Gray, um, as an indigenous character, came to me really around the time that I was also very uh, aware of or coming into greater awareness because, of course, I also live in a bubble um and uh i didn't i was coming into greater awareness about uh, missing and mur murdered indigenous women and girls and two spirit and um that was obviously uh the fact that there is so much um uh difficulty in terms of getting um you know real attention on that issue in this in any country and um so i was very moved by that and very frustrated by that that and and so he came and then but as this character came and as this as the story point came that he was also looking for somebody she just she was also an indigenous girl not not uh, a white girl like emma's looking for and then I began to realize that this might be a tricky world to go into because of appropriation of voice. And so um, I began to really investigate uh, what that means to, um, to, to write outside your cultural identity. And um, at the same time, and of course, you know, got lots of pushback and lots of concerns about that. Uh, but as a white writer, I don't want to have my writing worlds just be white middle class cisgendered uh, you know abled bodied like i i my world our world is, is very comprehensive right and um so it was like okay i had two choices one i don't go down that road at all or one i figure out if i can do it and i talked to many many um, people friends and people who became my friends in the meantime 
uh, who are indigenous um, and from various First Nations. And I talked to them about this process and uh, they uh, gave me a lot of guidance and um, a lot of shared their thoughts. And I have an extensive acknowledgements in my, at the end of the book uh, where I talk about that process and where I talk about, um, uh, you know, things like compensating your, your consultants, if you're doing that kind of, you know, asking for that kind of sensitive um, uh, emotional experience. And so it, I, yeah, I decided that I was going to explore what that would be like. And, and then it became the thing of now I'm walking the line of, well, where am I allowed? Like where, how, how do I protect those characters from me, a white writer? How do I protect them? And, um, and that became a very, very extensive process as well. Okay, I think everyone can see why I love working with Barbara Radecki, right? <laughs> These are the fabulous conversations we have as she's writing her book. I will finish with one, one question and then I'll throw it to the fabulous moderator, Sandy, for questions. But I'd like to know, I know you have a great working relationship with Barry Jowett at DCB Books. And I'd like to know what the best edit he gave you was. <laughs> so one of the beautiful things about working with Barry is he's not like an intrusive in your face, like watching every word that you do and telling you what to do. But he asks perfect questions, perfectly timed questions. And, um, and he's very nuanced and delicate with the way he deals with his writers. And uh, one of the most amazing things is we had a discussion uh, right after he acquired it, we talked for an hour and it, and it was, the book was not at all like what you're going to see, which is, which is interesting. You don't use, writers don't usually take a deal with a publisher and then say, okay, now I'm going to change it completely. But he said one thing, and I can't tell you what it is because it'll give away the story, the ending. Um, but he, he asked me one question and uh, I'm, I'm like, huh, I kind of registered it. And then uh, we continue to talk and we, I'm like, you know, he was sort of already backtracking. Yeah, you probably can't do it because it would un undo your whole story and you'd have to, you know. So then I, um, I went to bed that night and literally the entire new story I parachuted in, uh, in terms of this could happen, this could happen, this could happen. And I took off the first hundred pages of the book and I took the, off the last hundred pages of the book and I rewrote them uh, with uh, this new idea in mind. And Barry thankfully was very patient because I think the book now is actually so much stronger than it was back then. So. Wow. Well, <laughs> thank you. This has been fabulous. And, Thank you, Diane. Uh, take it away, Sandy. So if you'd like to see more from the book launch for Messenger 93, you can go to my YouTube channel and the whole launch is on there. Thank you.